what's going on internet today we're going to talk about what is the best absolute reason to start a business yep we're going to get into all that plus i've got some funny stuff so be sure to watch the whole video what's going on this is glendon cameron founder of hustlers kung fu Com. If you're trying to start a business or get your hustle going, you want those baby hustlers, baby business people, this is the place to be. Be sure to subscribe. Now let's get into today's rant before we get into the core subject matter because it all is related. I do not believe in clutter. And I know you're like, what does this have to do with making money? Years and years ago, I used to be a storage auction buyer. For real, for real. I saw what happened to people who just accumulation of stuff with no purpose in their life. Whenever my house starts to get cluttered or I'm looking for space or thinking about buying more organizers, that's a sign I need to get rid of some stuff. Well, I actually sold some stuff on eBay. Yes, but I know, right? Scary. First time in a long time, probably since 2006. And it was high-end camera equipment. I mean, I, I spent $2,700 for all of this stuff. The camera, which was a Canon 70D, and three lenses, a Sigma 1.8, a Canon 1.4, and a 1.8 50 millimeter, I forget. But 2,700 bucks for all that stuff new. Made a lot of videos, sold it on eBay. I made $1,700 back, yeah. So I used it for three years, spent 2,700 and got 1,700 back. Not a bad deal. Now that's something we're talking about in Hustler Camp. No, correction. We will be talking about that in Hustler's Camp, what I call why you should buy name brand stuff. But that's later. If you want to be part of Hustler Camp, it's below the video. I had some ass wipes, some yard birds. Most, there was five items for sale. I had one fraudulent buyer. eBay got rid of that person. Then I had this person who did this things. They bid, they won, and now it's 21 questions. Now, the way that the thing came to me was, hey, I just want to make sure that this isn't damaged, but you bid on it. My response, and this was always my response, I'm gonna drop a little eBay game for you. I was like, look, there's nothing wrong with the lens, you bought it, you need to pay. I'm not gonna kiss your ass when you're insulting my care. A lot of people don't have a great deal of self-respect that they will submit themselves to punish the name of a dollar. I'm not one of them. I get this other question and he was going on and I said, you know, to me it was a very benign response. The second one was, look, you need to pay within two hours or I am going to sell it to someone else. Is that clear enough for you? Very cutthroat, straight to the point. 30 minutes later, this fool paid. And I was like, you need to need more professional and all this. I didn't care. And I didn't respond anymore. I just packaged it up and shipped it out because my goal was to get paid, not to sit around here and uh, have all of these conversations with this person. So it shipped and everything. And I just posted the exchange. And then most of the people got it. But there was these two people. You handled that terribly. I keep forgetting. And this all goes back into why you should start a business. I'm gonna get to that, stay with me. Self-respect for your business is very important. They were going on and on and on. And like I said, I forgot that everyone still thinks I'm selling eBay or I'm driving for Uber. Not that I run a media agency, that, that just doesn't matter. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, and I, my first response, and if you're one of my friends on Facebook, you can see it. It's like, you have no self-respect to the first one. Then another person came and it's like, hey, I'm in the business. And I, I had to realize something. They think that we're the same. They think we're going through the same battles. They think that we're, we're have the same place in life. Hence, if that was me in that position, then what you did is wrong because I would have did something different. But the nuance there that's so important, we ain't in the same position. I was getting rid of excess stuff for a good price and I'll do it again in the future if I have to. But that's not my daily gig. My weekly, ain't even my part-time gig. My part-time gig is writing dirty books. So I got ahead and put some stuff in there and it made me really think that when I started this business, the YouTube channel, uh, the media company, it was not started to make money. It was started to make me happy. And at any point that I'm not happy, I'm out. This 
this is not, you know, I can make more money doing other stuff, and be straight up with you. But where I'm at in my life, which is very hard for people to understand if you're coming from a position of lack, if you're coming from a position of you're struggling to pay that next bill, you cannot wrap your little grimy mind around the fact that someone would actually turn down money to do something else. You can't wrap your mind around it. It makes no sense to you. It sounds strange. It sounds foreign. It's like a foreign language. But I made that choice because I've almost died twice. And I don't know how much longer I have on this planet. So I do stuff to make me happy. Happy is a very important element of my life. When I start to become unhappy, I start making changes. And that's really the, the end, the beginning of it. And that's why I think it is a great reason to start a business is to make yourself happy, is to build something that gives you joy. Doing the YouTube videos, writing the books, running the courses, doing all that stuff is fun. Oh, and for those of you who are thinking about joining Hustle Camp, let, let me just go ahead and put some stuff out of here. I want you to imagine your worst teacher in terms of high school and college, that professor that made you toe the line, the one you hated to go into the class, the one who bragged about, well, hey, the highest grade in this class is a C. I am that professor with Hustle Camp because I put out a challenge and there will be challenges every week. And the thing is, if you don't get the challenge right, you're not getting a passing grade. This is no social program. This is real life, because I'm gonna get into some other stuff about business as we go further in this video. But just letting you know, uh, Hustle Camp is very small. I think it's like 32 people. I think four more people will be jumping in today. I'm gonna give you real life lessons of the ingredients and the tools. So one, you can manage your money. Two, make more money. Three, build something. And it will not be easy. It will not be a quick fix and it won't be cheap. Starting the business to make yourself happy uh, is hard because there's other things you can do. Now, let's not conflate this with following your passion. Follow their passion, find something they like to do because either A, they're good at it, B, it can make money, C, they're, they're just like like video games. Many people consider video, playing video games a passion. I don't consider playing video games a passion. I consider the mindless preoccupation or if it's a high skill level game, you might develop some tactics and analyzation skills. It's play. Now, once again, if you wanna play video games all day, if you can figure out a way to make money doing that, cool. But I don't consider that a passion because I used to love to play video games. I used to be able to kill Centipede, remember Centipede with the ball? I used to be able to get 200, 300. I mean, I used to get so much value for my quarter. Um, Pac-Man. Then I got to a point where I didn't care about that anymore. But at no point in my life has reading, communication, being creative has ever gone anywhere. Never. It's been present in every decade of my life in some shape, form, or fashion. Let's not conflate that because many people think that doing what you want to do because A, you're scared to challenge yourself. B, you don't want to learn something new. C, you feel like a fish out of water when you're doing something difficult, challenging. Uh, YouTube was very challenging for me in the beginning. I mean, I caught hell handbrake. Anyone remember handbrake? I had to use handbrake to compress the videos because the file was so large and at the time, YouTube did not accept those files. Now you can put up to eight hours worth of content up. I stuck with it because it was in line with what made me happy. And let me be real clear about that. You will not be happy every day. You will not be happy every moment. For me, it's at the end of the month, I look back and I go, wow, I, I created a lot of content. Wow, I, I've signed up more students. Wow, I've did this. Oh, I'm working part of this deal. And I get happy. And I, you know, that, that's just my thing. But many people out here are starting businesses because it's trendy. And I'm gonna give you another example. A long time ago when Microsoft was it, they had this MSCE certification where you take this test, you pass, you would instantly get a job making 50 G's. I think this was like 90s or something. And a lot of people got 
got into it, they started taking that certification because of the money, because it would improve their life, because it would change things for them. And they didn't really give a damn about technology. Didn't care. Didn't, just was like, no, 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 no. I, I'm not in this. I'm not a part of this. This is not going to be something long term for me. And many people washed out. Most of them washed out after technology changed. So right now you have this thing with social media, uh, becoming a social media manager. I think if you love social media, you're always on social media, you know all of the apps, you'd probably be a great social media manager. But if you're getting into it because of the money, you're getting into it because it's a, it's a quick come up, more than likely you're gonna suck, pretty much. Or if you come good, you're gonna hate it. I know one, two, three, four people who are really good at what they do in terms of their social, their internet savvy. They hate what they do. They are burnt out, just cranky about it, but that's the only thing they can do. Another suggestion is you need to have more than one thing that makes you happy that can also make you money. You want to create happiness wealth streams, as I like to call them. Things you like to do, things that you enjoy, things that you're invested in, things that you can do long term. That is another issue with these things today. People don't think long term. They think the next 30 days, the next 90 days. Maybe not even, I mean, really that's it. Because when you start talking about six month planning, 12 month planning, uh, 60 month planning, people start looking at you like you are an alien from another planet. Right now, we have so much opportunity with the internet, uh, the things that you can do, the things that you can create. There is no reason for you to only have one source of income today. There is no reason for you just have one source of income to be panicked, which kind of goes back to my whole thing with the people thinking that I only do eBay because I have a messaging issue. I have a big time messaging issue because people will friend me because I see it all day and I look and all common friends do Amazon FBA and all this other stuff, which I have several videos against Amazon FBA, against eBay. I have videos up. You can Google them. And they're like, and I was just sitting there like, people don't research or I think part of it is people do not think that they can grow. Therefore, I can't grow you can't grow. I think that's a big part of it, and that's for the tribalism. And one of the things, and I was talking to a client about this, is once you get into resale, it's like a trap. It's like an addiction. And it's very hard for many people to get out once they get in, because there are very few things that require minimum skill sets. All you need to get in resale is some cash and some hustle. That's it. And really, I would say in very short order, weeks to a few months, you can be making you know, a G a month, two Gs a month, three Gs a month consistently if you stick with it. It's very possible and there's just not a lot of things out there that give that kind of return with such a minimum investment. It's just not much out there. And I think that's one of the people reasons that people just lose it because there's nothing else. There's, like I said, there's nothing else out there with such a low barrier to entry, which also is one of the reasons the business is so sketchy. Now let's talk about rabbit curiosity. Long, long time ago on a planet far, far away called the United States of America, there was a certain grooming process to adolescents. Popular mechanics, mechanical something. I don't even remember the name of these magazines. It's been so long ago. But every month, if you were a wee lad, you would get in your mailbox or go to the library or at the supermarket, you would see all of these periodicals that open up the door to curiosity because one of the things and I don't want to get in the comments Glendon what if I don't know what I want to do and my response 
to you will be the same as it always has been. Experiment. You're going to have to get up, go out, and start doing stuff. So many people are loath to try something if there isn't copious, well-defined, immediate gratification. They're not going to do anything. A lot of stuff that I do that rubs people the wrong way is for my own fancy just to see how it's going to flow, just to have fun with it. I have no problem with that. Exploring, trying stuff out. My, what happened to me? I did not set out to do YouTube. YouTube was part of the communication journey. I always said, and I put it out, that I'm going to be a writer forever. Writer, communicator, content creator, whatever you want. That's all up in my wheelhouse, and that's what I'm doing. For many people, it makes no sense for me to do that when I have very high skill sell, resale skill sets. It's like I could be doing this, I could be doing that, I could make a lot more money, but the thing is, I wouldn't be happy. And I don't really, I can't break it down to people who are ill prepared to understand that concept that happiness is that important to me. If, like I said, early in the video, if you're struggling, you need money, like I couldn't do that. But see, I don't operate on the money principle the way that you do. And this is where I keep saying, we're not the same. People see me, they hear how I speak, they're like, yeah, we're very much similar. No, we're not. And I say this because I was talking to my 97-year-old Aunt Bunny, who I need to call. I don't think she's doing well. Whoa, she would be 98 now. She said something, it's like, you're very different as a young man. Now, as someone who's known me since I came into the world. And I have this way of looking at the world. Like, you know, going back to the eBay thing where people are like, you did that wrong. I didn't give a damn. I didn't care. I'm not doing this every day. This is not going to feed me. This is not going to pay the mortgage. This isn't paying the insurance or, or the rent on the offices. This, this, is, this is just to get rid of extra stuff and get extreme value out of something that I copiously used to put those funds toward other camera gear. That was, that was it. There was no overarching, bigger thing. No, I'm not going to start selling on eBay every month. I'm not doing that. I have people that I'm helping. I have clients. I have folks in the hustle camp. And I'm going to impart that knowledge to them. It's called Epic Resell. And I had to part of sell that. See what if my stuff still works. See if my, my voodoo, <laughs> if my mojo, if my uh, special sauce, if my, all that, and it still works. And what's really sad is, I'm not going to race this person. I need to focus on this video. What is really sad is how many people live their lives predicated on what other people tell them that they think they should be and have. And I, I, I vigorously reject those notions because let's take this channel. If I just turned this into a resale channel and just talked about that and dropped that knowledge, I would probably triple my views, triple the views, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. And I'm going to tell you, being in a position to do what you want and the money is not part of the equation is an awesome feeling. It's an amazing feeling. And I want you to experience that. And before you can get there, you're going to have to go through some trials and tribulations. This did not happen overnight. Now, I talk to people and they, they'll see what I do. And I have to say, this took years. This took years, not a week, not a month. It took years. And people are like, I, I don't want to hear that year part. You know, I'm good with weeks, I'm good with some months, maybe a year, but years, nah, mm -mm. no, brah. You gotta come at me with something better. No, I don't, no, I don't. Life has, you have to have, you, you have to come at life with something better because here's some truth for you. Most of the people in this country are close to broke. And if you do not radically alter how you're doing stuff, the ability for that to happen to you is so easy because you're believing in false narratives. Like right now, people are like, oh, the stock market's doing this. The stock market is manipulated. I am not in the stock market and people are like, oh, you're missing all those gains. Uh, 2009, I started this publishing company for $289, fiscal investment, and then an intellectual sweat equity investment, and it's yielded $6 million. So anybody 
over the last nine years. Anybody who has bought a stock and only spent $289 and had that kind of return, come at me, brah. Every time I hear it, I'm like, oh, they, that, ain't, that ain't working for me. That does not excite me. That doesn't give me a chubby. You know, so what you tell me, to see the thing is I used to be in the market and my portfolio was nice. You know what was nice? I was saving 50% of my income and I was dumping the other 50% into the market. So my portfolio looked real good from a numbers perspective, but from a gains perspective, it sucked. One day I just sat down, I was like, wait a minute. Most of this money I put in, this isn't returns. And you know, and it's like for me, best returns I've ever had have been from my businesses. And go, you know what, you don't believe me, do this. Find a stockbroker. Go to any one of these places and say, hey, who do you get on the phone and call? And they're gonna say business owners, they're gonna say doctors, they're gonna say high income employed. They're not gonna say school teachers who do a valuable job in society. Some of them do. Not all of them, but some of them do. That's the whole thing that I, I like, you know, try to tell people. It was those years of working in my warehouse, the upscale garage sale, and being out there on the storage auction trail, and selling office furniture, and getting all of those experiences, and meeting people, and learning how to do a business deal, and learning how to write a business plan, learning how to set up legal structure. That, it was so much education. And I will submit to you, the people who have the most education make the most money. But that begs the question, what is education? Think it's a college degree, you have a very limited view of education. Because I'll put my business experience, I'll put up my results against anyone's degree. Anybody. Because your degree does not prepare you for the marketplace. And I have been in the marketplace for damn near 20 years. Dealing with customers, dealing like the ass wipe on eBay. And you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and drop that eBay knowledge. When you have someone who's playing you like that, the percentage is they're trying to bail or they're trying to renegotiate their bid. So you got two options. You could either submit and just take it up the rear, or you could be a man, be a woman. If you're a rabbit selling on eBay, be the best rabbit you can be and just say, look, you bid on this, these questions should have been asked before. You're obligated to pay me, and if you're not gonna pay me, let me know now so I can govern myself accordingly. Because I had someone who bid on this Omega watch. Um, the bids got $2,900, they got the watch out of a unit. And then they win, after the auction, they hit me with 30 questions. I was like, Hmm. What you gonna do, Playboy? So I immediately hit up the second bidder because you don't have a lot of time. Like you hit up the second bidder, like a day later, the enthusiasm, the high, it's gone. So I like immediately went to that second bidder and I told this person, I was like, I just sold this to the second bidder because you were asking way too many questions. I don't think you're gonna pay. So you can consider yourself released from this obligation. We're talking about $5 difference. And it was like, oh, well, no, 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 no. And I get this this email, no, 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 no. I was like, dude, you're acting real sketchy. So I'm gonna do what's right for me. And I sold it to the other guy, paid instantly. I took that watch, wrapped it up real nice, took it to the Atlanta airport postal, you know, post uh, office, because you, you take stuff down there, it literally leaves Atlanta that night if you get there early enough. Dude got the watch the second day, left great feedback, and for a week, I went back and forth with this guy, and he was like, oh, well, no, no. And he was asking all these questions, and then it went dark. I didn't even ask for my final V's back. I made so much money on the watch, I didn't even care. I've had, and th this is another lesson for you. When people are coming at you like that, they're coming at you for an angle to reduce your income. They're not trying to be fair. They're not trying to be equitable. They're not trying to be a good person. They're trying to bend you over. 
And I, as a human being, think it's disgusting. And what I think is more disgusting is if you, as a human being, allow that to happen because you don't want to stand up for your rights, that's real disgusting. And that was that conversation on my Facebook page. This is how you don't have to worry about negatives. I got negatives all the time, but we sold so much product due to the ratios, it didn't matter. I would talk to people like that all the time. I was like, you gonna pay? I got real Asian. You buy or you go. And that's the reality of it because as a customer, only thing you care about is you. You don't care about me. You don't care about my employees. You don't care about what's going on in my life. All you want is your blue shirt with the Batman sticker on it. And it better come quick. And people who refuse to accept these real principles are going to be eaten alive. Because this new marketplace, this, let me tell you what's going to happen. China has an issue right now, but they're going to solve it. And as more and more of these sellers do an Amazon, learn from you where you're selling. Because right, right now I'm ordering products from China. And I act as an intermediary because they can't figure out where this is going and what's being sold. They don't know who the hell my client is. So they can't get that information because you think Amazon's the only one that's going to watch your sales and gain, gain information? They're doing it all day long in China. So don't be so forthgiving. It's like, look, I want this product at this price and bam, that's it. That's what you tell them. You don't get all deep about your personal business with these people because they will sell against you. They're good at it too. And I predict in five years, that's going to be 35, maybe 50% of Amazon. Now I know you're like, no, Glendon, okay, watch, just watch. But you want to start a business, think about what makes you happy. Investigate time there. Investigate your waking hours on what do I want to do. And I'd like to say, if you don't know, fine. But do something. Don't sit around and wait for someone to tell you what your dream should be. That cracks me up. It's like that movie, The Italian Job, where this guy had no fantasies of his own, so he stole everyone else's. Do you want to be weak? Do you want to be aimless? Do you want to just live this life hoping that someone is going to drop some knowledge in your life and change your life? If you are busy building something, opportunity will run into you. See, and this is physics. When an object is in motion, the only thing that's going to stop that object in motion is inertia or another object in motion. Billiards, great example of these physics. So, if you're in motion and then your mentor's in motion and you meet, you're going to either collide, not work together, or you're going to collide and go forward faster or go in opposite directions faster. But if you're just sitting there doing nothing, waiting, wishing, hoping, you're not gonna meet anybody. When I meet all these nice people, it's always because I'm out there doing something. I'm doing something. So you gotta be about something, you gotta do something. So if you're gonna start a business, start one to make yourself happy. Two, don't do a business where you gotta take crap from people just to stay in business. I mean, if you notice, there are no ads on this YouTube video. YouTube, now, and this this is another hit. YouTube, and they won't admit this, but I know, I've experimented, they push your videos if there's ads on it. They push them better. There are no ads on this video because I'm selling me. You know, I'm Glenn Cameron, founder of HustlesKungFu.com. We got Hustle Camp. We have other products. And I'm going to sell them to you. I'm not going to sit around and go like, well, I hope you buy. That sounds weak. You're going to buy. You're not going to buy. And I'm going to keep putting up videos. I'm going to keep selling. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep making money. Because this is fun. So go out and find some of your fun today. What makes you happy? I mean, pick some. Be serious about it. And if you want to get a good, sound, financial education, 
with real tactics on how to make money where you are because here's another little secret if you start a physical business and master that coming online is going to be better if you're selling physical products if you're going to do apps go ahead and do apps if you're going to if you try to become an influencer um, could happen but I'm telling you if you learn basic business skill sets you're going to crush it online more so than the folks who don't so if you want part of that you want a piece of the action go below the video join hustlers camp everything's written up if you've got any questions there's a f my assistant you can call her you can you can text her she'll get back to you and then we can go from there so until i have another cranky moment i felt this was good to start the month off i'll see you guys later